Oftentimes, both on and off the wiki, you will hear people either complain about or talk about how good it is that the SCP wiki's content has sort of drifted in both type and quality over the years. And a lot of the time you're going to hear things like, Series 1 was better, or Series 1 was worse. But regardless of which of those camps you fall into, I'm here to tell you about how you're probably wrong about Series 1. Now it can certainly be said that Series 1 has a particular feel to it, and that the majority of its articles tend to fall into the same-ish category. The idea of an object that does a thing. When we talk about SCP-173, it's just a statue that goes around breaking people's necks if they blink near it, or in a room with it, I should say. And if we talk about something like SCP-106, it's just a old man covered in black tar who has a pocket dimension. <laughs> who maybe likes to eat people, sort of unsure. The fact is a lot of Series 1 articles don't really have any sort of narrative attached to them. I should say, no complex narrative attached to them. All articles on the SCP Wiki, and pretty much any writing whatsoever, has a narrative of some kind. It just might not be a very good narrative, or it might not be a very in-depth narrative. And that's okay, there's plenty of value to be had in reading, say, a uh, magic item catalog out of D&D. &D. That could be that could be fun for people, especially when I was younger. I could imagine I see myself reading that kind of stuff and thinking about the kind of stories I could tell with it. But that doesn't mean that the piece itself has inherent value as a narrative. Now, the biggest problem with treating Series 1 as that kind of article is that Series 1 isn't a monolith. There's a variety of types of articles in Series 1. You've got SCP-173 type articles, but you've also got SCP-093, which is the Red Sea object. And the Red Sea object has an incredibly in-depth narrative. In fact, it's one of the few uh, Series 1 articles that actually got me interested in reading more of the site. And the other half of that is that not every Series 1 article is like 10 or 11 years old. For example, I wrote SCP-245 when a article that was in that slot actually got deleted for quality issues. It dropped down to negative 10, it was gone, and I put an article in there, and it's a video game that you play and that delivers its narrative that way. But that's a Series 1 article. So when people talk about Series 1, what they usually mean is the kind of article I either like or dislike, depending on who they are. And there's an elitism on both sides of that coin, although it can be harder to see the elitism of the Series 1 fans, because a lot of, not all of them, but a lot of them, uh, what's the words I'm looking for here? <laughs> they espouse their views in a unrefined way. I've got plenty of comments in videos I've done in the past that full of grammatical errors, where people were talking about how great Series 1 was, and that I the SCP wiki needs to get back to it. There's a lot, lot less of people who think that Series 1 was bad and who also similarly talk that way. But that doesn't mean that either side is inherently correct or incorrect. It just means that there's different kinds of people. I think that Series 1 fans tend to skew younger um, and the Series 1 haters, for lack of a better term, tend to skew older but there's definitely crossover on both sides of that coin. And the truth of the matter is, is that the elitism of both sides is kind of dumb. And this kind of thing is definitely not restricted to just SCP articles. I mean, think about the latest Michael Bay movie. It does great financially, and people look at that as, say, <laughs> I literally saw someone say that Transformers Revenge of the Falling was a sign of the fall of Western civilization, which is problematic for a number of reasons, but primarily it's just stupid. The thing is, the SCP Wiki has enough room for both kinds of people and both kinds of articles. I've written both magic objects and monster manual entries. I've written long in-depth narrative SCPs. And the truth of the matter is, is that there's fans for both kinds. And you as an author, if you're planning on writing for the Wiki, should remember that the fans are the people who you are actually writing your articles for. Now, in the end, you want to make sure you're writing for yourself as well. 
So you got to write what you like. But if you want to see upvotes on your article, you also have to consider what other people like. And the idea of treating series one as something to be avoided is problematic for a variety of additional reasons. Now, this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but I'm going to give this as an example. I have read a little bit of Harry Potter. I watched one movie. I don't really enjoy it. Now, I personally enjoy science fiction as a genre, and there's a lot of bad science fiction out there that I'll read and or watch just because I enjoy the genre more. I can see that Harry Potter is probably high quality writing, but to me, it doesn't work. Does that mean because I don't like it, I should say stuff like JK Rowling should write more science fiction novels and not write any more Harry Potter because that's dumb. What she wrote was successful. She should continue to do what's successful, especially if she enjoys writing it. But the primary problem is, is that creators are always going to be beholden to their fans and fans make or break a work. And we can bemoan things like Michael Bay movies all day, but as long as people go to see them, they have a value. And frankly, he should continue to create more until they stop making money. The issue, I think, is definitely elitism on both sides, or even just a matter of gatekeeping. The idea that, oh, you wrote an article that's just a magic item, so you don't really belong here. Or you wrote an article that's not horror, and has a narrative thrown on top of it. It's a love story SCP. That's not what the SCP Foundation is supposed to be about. Anytime you hear someone say, that's not what the SCP Foundation is supposed to be about, they're being a fucking idiot. And I've never fully understood why it is so difficult for people to understand that things they don't like might be good and things they don't like might be worthy of being emulated. I do more understand when someone ties up part of their self-worth in the things they like. Uh, Harry Potter, I'll go back to that as an example. If you insulted Harry Potter to somebody, there's a lot of people especially who, people who grew up reading it and it's an integral part of their lives, would legitimately feel personally attacked if you say it's bad, right? But that's not a personal attack on you. And, and that extends to people who might even just say, as I have, it's not for me. What do you mean it's not for you? It's the perfect work. It's amazing. How can you not like the things that I like? And that is probably getting a little bit into a area of philosophy here because it's because people think of everything as being objectively true. Like if something is good and I like it, then everyone must like it. And if they say they don't like it, they're either deliberately lying to me or they just have really bad taste. Like there's something wrong with them if they don't like it because there's definitely nothing wrong with me. When no one was saying there was anything wrong with you in the first place. I'm going to note again here, because this is very important to understand, there's a lot of people listening to this and thinking of the other side. There's people who are fans of Series 1 thinking about the people who write long narrative articles, and they're thinking, ah, this is directed at those people. And there's people who write the long narrative articles who look at the people who are just fans of like 10 Series 1 articles, and they're saying, this is about those people. Let me tell you something, it's about both of you people. <laughs> We have to stop narrowing our avenues, and we have to start expanding our avenues of creative freedom. And the SCP Wiki has done an amazing job of that, by the way. Like, outside of a, a, what is truly a minority of people. there It's a large and vocal minority, but it's still a minority of people. Outside of that minority, I think that the Wiki has done an amazingly good job of allowing all kinds of articles. Of course, there's always going to be assholes that you have to watch out for, and unfortunately, the SCP Wiki, I feel, has a higher than normal asshole to non-asshole ratio, but don't feel guilty about liking what you like. Don't feel guilty about writing what you like. If it's any good, it will survive on the Wiki, and in general, will be accepted in society as a good work. But at the same time, don't get that smug sense of superiority about how what you like is better than what everybody else likes. And if anyone else has different tastes, then they're just bad people or they just don't know how to create good work. Smug superiority is my department, 
not yours. Anyway, that's this episode. If you like the video, scroll down and hit the subscribe button. You got to make sure you hit that subscribe button. I've been getting notifications from YouTube that a lot of my viewers are not hitting the subscribe button. Uh, so I very much like it if you went down there and hit the subscribe button. I'm going to say subscribe button probably three or four more times. Uh, <laughs> And then hit the notification bell. I guess not. And hit the notification bell next to that so that you'll be notified when I put out a new video. And if you really want to support this content, it is a very good time because it is near the beginning of the month to pledge on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian like everybody on your screen has and join Marty Stockton who pledged $1, Rachel Montoya who pledged $5, and Raul Braun who pledged $10. I want to thank those people very much for their donations. It's the kind of thing that helps make sure that I will always have time to create these videos for you. Pledges on Patreon are processed at the beginning of every month. So if you pledge at the beginning of the month, like right now, you get the full benefit without having to worry about, you know, getting recharged in a few days. So just take a look at it. I very much appreciate every single one of you. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. And I'll see you all again on Thursday.